ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Did you ever talk to your grandmother or your mother about what it used to be like to bake an angel food cake? Before there was a Betty Crocker angel food cake mix, that is. Well, they used to have to take 13 eggs and separate the whites from the yolks. Can you imagine all that bother? Over a dozen eggs. Angel food cakes took hours then. And I guess that's why they only baked them for very, very special occasions. But now, you can have big, delicious angel food cakes all the time. Mmm. -hmm. It's so easy when Mom uses Betty Crocker Angel Food Cake Mix. That's the mix with the whites of 13 farm-fresh eggs right in the package. Mom just adds water and your favorite flavoring for a perfect cake. Angel perfect every time. Cake after cake after cake. A high light every day is party day kind of cake. And it's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. I hope Mom bakes lots of Betty Crocker angel food cakes at your house. They're so melt in your mouth good. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again! Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Are you Silver? The terms of John Colby's will made Roger Garrett the executor of his estate and guardian of 17-year-old Kay Colby. Garrett was the Indian agent for the district. But after John's death, he also took over the management of the Colby Ranch and spent as much time there as he did at the agency in town. One afternoon, he was working in the ranch office when the door opened and Kay entered. Roger, where's Larry Gage? Well, now, where would your foreman be at this time of day? Out on the range, I suppose. But he isn't. I've just been talking with Shorty. I'm afraid he's gone to town. Afraid? Why afraid? Why shouldn't he go to town if he wants to? I'm afraid he's gone to pick a fight with Derek Forbes. I'll see you Larry Gage, the husky young foreman of the Colby Ranch, searched the town until he found Derek Forbes in the Palace Cafe. I think you're a crook. <laughs> because I'm an Easterner. Be honest, Larry. You don't like me because Kay and I are going to be married. That's a lie. No, it isn't. I called you a liar. And now I'm supposed to go for my gun. <laughs> oh, no, Larry. I know you can outdraw me. You're yellow. Will you leave our guns with Joe and settle that outside? That suits me. Let you finish. <laughs> Julie, what have you going outside? Met Larry. Hello, Sheriff. Howdy. Did you hear me, Larry? You've got no call to interfere. I'm preserving the peace. What's more, there's a lady waiting outside for you. What? Kay? Well, it looks like her, and it sounds like her, and she's hopping mad. She is? <laughs> Tell her that I haven't forgotten her invitation to supper, Larry. Tell her I'll be there. Aye, right. come on, Larry. <laughs> Arrived in time, Sheriff? I did. And now I'm delivering the prisoner into your custody, kid. Thank you. Always glad to oblige you later. Larry, you did come here to pick a fight with Derek. You can't marry him, Kay. He's a crook. You're a local. I won't stand by and let him get away with it. 
I haven't given him my answer yet. But when in the name of common sense will you stop trying to run my life? But you're only 17. I have a guardian appointed by law, and his name isn't Larry Gage. Now, if you don't behave yourself, I'll have Roger fire you. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want to, I'll admit, but I shall if you make it necessary. Oh, I... Oh, I guess I haven't any right to interfere. No, none at all. Derek said he hadn't forgotten your invitation. You'll be out for supper. He's expecting. Maybe you'd like to wait and ride out with him. No. The prisoner was released into my custody. Now climb aboard your bronc and let you start. Yes, ma'am. Easy, boy. <laughs> get up! Come on, get up! Oh. silent all through supper that night. And when it was over, he started for the bunkhouse. But Roger stopped him and asked him to step into the office to go over some business details. Just as they were sitting down, a shot rang out from the distance. What's that? Probably one of the boys taking a pot shot at a coyote. Now, what I wanted to ask you about is the 2,000 head we bought from the pot hook. Where are they? The valley south of Rock Canyon. And don't you go buying any more steers, Roger. Why not? Oh, man alive, you bought 5,000 head this summer. At a very low price. And it was so convenient to have them driven up with the cattle I bought for the Indians. I grant you that. We're pretty close to being overstocked right now. Hey, listen. Drums. Yeah, probably some ceremony at the reservation. No, no. They sound closer than the reservation. The wind must be blowing this direction. I've never heard them so close. Roger? What? Mary, come here. What is it, Kay? Come here, please. Shorty, I have something to tell you. Something wrong, Shorty? Yeah, I think I just saw a bandit. A bandit? A masked man on a big white horse. There was an Indian with him, too. Where, Shorty? Where'd you see him? Near the woods up on the rise. The moon was shining full on their faces, and I had a good look at you them. You shot at him? Yeah. Then they ducked into the woods. Shall I get the boys together and go after them? That's not necessary. Who said that? At the sound of the new voice, everyone turned. The Lone Ranger was standing in the doorway leading to the dark kitchen. His guns were drawn. That's the masked man I saw. I wouldn't advise any of you to go for your guns. What do you want? Which one of you is Roger Garrett? I am. The Indian agent for this territory? Yes. How did you get in here? Through the kitchen window. I have a message for you, Garrett. A message? Bad news. The chief and all his braves have left the reservation. What? Huh? They're camped in the hills just above the valley. And those are war drums you hear. Why, he's on the war path. It can't be. You've never had any trouble with the tribe before? No, never. Can you think of any reason why they should leave the reservation, Garrett? Not one. There must be some mistake. Not about what I've told you. I'm not accustomed to taking the word of a man with a mask. Maybe not, Roger. Would an outlaw take a chance on coming here if there weren't some real danger of a massacre? I intend to investigate. That's all I ask. Well, he's gone. Shall I go after him, boss? No, no. He's done us a great service. Let him go. How do you mean to investigate, Roger? I'm going to see White Eagle. Alone? Yes. The Indians know I represent the great White Father. They wouldn't dare touch me. Alone, I'll be perfectly safe. I'll leave it to you, Larry, to see the town and the other ranchers are warned. Did you hear that? The masked man riding away. Silver. He called his horse Silver. A masked man on a white horse with an Indian partner. He must be the Lone Ranger. When Roger Garrett rode into the hills, the Lone Ranger and Toto followed him but cautiously, making sure they wouldn't be seen. The fresh hoof prints were enough to mark the trail for Tonto, and it soon became obvious that the agent was heading toward the sound of the drums. The Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the ridge above the Indian encampment in time to see Garrett guiding his mount down the slope, straight toward the dancing warriors. Oh, 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 Him not afraid of white eagle. Not sure. They see him, they stop the dance. 
Me not understand. They mean they not Apache. Not like Apache. And peaceful. Garrett may be able to straighten out the trouble, whatever it is. I wish I could hear what they're saying. Well, White Eagle make plenty sign when they talk. We understand what Chief say. What, Toto? What Chief say? Tribe hungry. Want more beef from Great White Father. Hungry? Ah. And say Indian starve. Then not get more beef. Kill white man, take beef. Garrett's answering them. Him. Not you, sign to make talk. You not know what him say. Well, if it's only a question of food, that should be easily settled. Ah, uh, indeed not like what Garrett say. And plenty man. Doesn't he realize you must give them some sort of a promise? There are a few extra head of cattle if they'll prevent bloodshed. Garrett's right way now. Indian go for gun. They're all piled up in front of the chief's teepee. Open fire, Tonto. We'll try to cover Garrett. <laughs> Another volley. Garrett out of range now. I want us to talk with him, Kimosabe. That's a good idea. It was in his power to stop this uprising. Why didn't he? It's plenty strange. Come on, Fiddler. Come on, Fiddler. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. And that's the truth. Take California champions, for instance. Now, way out west, you'll hear us talking about a quarterback we call Van Brocklin, a passing star with Wheaties style who throws that ball a country mile. And Duke Snyder, too, is a West Coast man, a fancy slugger, and the Wheaties fan who takes his bat and scares them all when he knocks the hide right off the ball. Now, these two champions know that there's big energy in their favorite cereal because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. to continue. The Lone Ranger and Tottle followed Roger Garrett down from the hills. Garrett, wait a minute. Oh. Oh. Let him stop. Hold oh. 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 man, you've been following me. We were on the ridge above the Indian encampment when you talked with White Eagle. We covered your retreat. You did? I heard shots, but I thought it was the Indians shooting at me. We managed to stop them from reaching their guns until you were out of range. I see. You, uh, didn't have much success with your conference. No, there was no reasoning with them. They refused to stay on the reservation any longer. They mean to take over the valley. Why do you not? Uh, never mind, Otto. The whole tribe's gone berserk. That's the only explanation. There's only one way to deal with them. Will you answer a question, mister? If I can. Are you the Lone Ranger? That's right. I thought so. Will you help us out? In what way? Will you ride to Fort Tamarack and bring the troops? They couldn't get here in less than two days. We'll try to hold out until then. You're sure there's no other way to handle the situation? Absolutely none. The tribe must be destroyed. I see. Well, Tonto and I will do our best. You may depend on it. Thanks, that's fine. Now I'll have to get going. Get up there. Get along. We ride to Fort Kimasani? No, Toto. All the Indian want is beef. I'm wondering why Garrett wouldn't admit that. We must find out. You want me to go into town? Find out what him do now? Yeah, we'll both go. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. The night sky clouded over as the Lone Ranger and Tottle rode through the back streets of the town. Finally, they reached the alley in the rear of the sheriff's office. There was a great crowd in the main street. The masked man and the Indian dismounted. He crept along the side of the building until they could hear what was going on. Roger Garrett was speaking to the men. Quiet! Quiet down, men! You may wonder what suddenly got into the tribe. I'll tell you. There's a renegade white man around here. He wears a mask and rides a big white horse. 
He is the one who is responsible for this rebellion. If you ever see him, shoot the kill. That's enough, Toto. What you do now? I want to find out just how much beef the Indians have been getting. The record should be in the agency office. We've got to get in from the rear. The Lone Ranger and Toto led Silver and Scout down the alley to the rear of the Indian agency. The masked man tried one of the windows. Good. It isn't locked. <coughs> the storeroom. The office is in front. The shades are drawn. That helps. There it is. That cabinet must be where the papers are filed. Let me have your hunting knife. I think I can force it open. Uh, here. Thanks. Keep us up. Somebody at front door. Into the back room. Quick. Uh. The lone ranger left the door open a little and watched as Derek Forbes entered the office. After lighting a lamp, Forbes went to the cabinet, unlocked it, and took out some papers. Then he went to the desk and sat down. He examined the paper on the top of the pile, took a pen, dipped it in the ink, and bent over the paper. Swiftly, the Lone Ranger entered the room. Hey! I'll take that paper. Keep him covered, Toto. Uh, give me that receipt. Yes, a receipt for cattle. A receipt with White Eagle's mark on it. Pothook brand. One thousand head. But the ink on the last zero isn't dry. You've just changed this receipt from a hundred head to a thousand. Now I'll take a look at these others. One hundred, one hundred, one hundred. Mm, Five hundred head to feed all those Indians for six months. No wonder they're starving. You say pot hook brand, Kimipapi? Yes, Tonto. There are plenty of pot hook steers on Colby Range. That's true. I remember seeing them. Now what are you going to do? Investigate this cabinet a little further. Looking for some bills of sale. Yes, here they are. Public steers bought and paid for by this agency. Not hundreds of head, but thousands. So that's the answer. As a government agent, Garrett bought thousands of head of cattle, delivered a few hundred head of the Indians. He had the rest driven to the Colby Ranch. As manager of the Colby Ranch, he paid for them. But the money didn't go into the agency account. It went into Garrett's own pocket. So the Indians have been cheated. The government has been cheated. And K. Colby has paid good money for stolen cattle. You have it all figured out, huh? Practically. I only need to look at the Colby ledgers. Garrett's private bank book to prove my case. And if the bank book's on this desk. Not here. Yes, here it is. Let me see. April 15th. May, June. A nice haul for Garrett. This won't do you any good. You'd better forget those papers and get out of town. I'm taking the papers and the bank book with me. You've been branded a renegade. If anyone sees you, they'll shoot. We'll make sure that you don't interfere with our getting away. Roger Garrett and the sheriff entered the agency office a few hey, minutes later. They found Derek Forbes lying on the floor, bound and gagged. When the gag had been removed and his ropes cut... Derek, what happened? The masked man was here. He broke into that cabinet and took a lot of paper. Well, don't worry. We'll get him. I have a posse all set to ride. But the Lone Ranger and Tonto were well on their way to the Colby Ranch. There they found Kay and Larry Gage at the ranch house. One close look at the mighty silver and the girl and the foreman were absolutely sure of the masked man's identity. They invited him in, and he showed them the papers he had brought from the agency. Then, together, they examined the ranch ledgers. Yes, you paid for all the cattle you received, Miss Colby, but the money went to Garrett. So Roger is a crook. And you were right about Derek all along, Larry. The question is, what do we do now? The first thing is to stop the Indians from raiding the valley. Well, how? By giving them their rightful property, the pothook steers you're grazing. Well, I certainly don't want them if they don't belong to me. You may be able to get your money back later on from Garrett. Now we must move fast. Larry, how long will it take you to round up the herd and get it moving toward the reservation? Oh, an hour or so. None of the boys are going to bed. I can have them in the saddle in ten minutes. 
Toto, if you could tell the chief the herd was on its way, could you persuade him to hold his braves in check? Let me try. We can depend on you, Larry. Sure thing. All right, let's go, Toto. Uh Larry and his men were starting their drive. But Roger Garrett and Derek Forbes had guessed the Lone Ranger might pay the ranch a visit and persuaded the sheriff and his posse to ride out there. They caught sight of the cowboys south of Rock Canyon. Those cattle are on the move. Rustlers. Yeah, rustlers nothing. Those are your own men. That's Larry on the soil. I still say you're rustlers. Larry have no orders for me to move that herd. Even so. They're driving them straight off Colby land. I want you to stop them, Sheriff. Arrest them if you have to. Hold up there, Larry. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah. Stop hazing those steers, boys. Pay no attention. Keep moving, boys. I give the orders around here. Not anymore, you don't. Arrest him, Sheriff. This herd belongs to the engines, and we're driving it up to the reservation. Do what? Did the masked man persuade you to do that? He sure did. Dirty renegade. Renegade nothing. He's the Lone Ranger. Lone oh, oh, Ranger? A renegade and an outlaw. He started the uprising. He broke into the agency. I know he tried... did, and I just wish I had the papers he took from there. Sheriff, it's these two who are crooks. I'm telling you, this herd belongs to the engines and that Roger Garrett stole it. What do you say? That's true. The only reason the engines have gone on the war path is that they're hungry. Roger? It isn't true. They want scalps, and the masked man is their leader. Uh, Here he comes, straight toward us. A thousand dollars to the man who kills him. Don't let him shoot, Sheriff. That's the Lone Ranger. Look at his horse. That's silver. And the engine on the paint behind him, that's tunnel. Who's your fire, for? Not a chance. I've got him dead in my sights. Before Derek could squeeze the trigger, the Lone Ranger fired, and the bullet caught the Easterner in the right forearm. Good shot, mister. I know you trying it then, Jared. I've got you covered. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Sheriff, I know you think I'm an outlaw. Not anymore, I... I don't. Well, please believe me, then. If this herd doesn't reach the Indians before dawn, there'll be a massacre. You got any proof that Garrett's been starving the Indians to mind his own pockets? Yes, Sheriff. This bank book and these papers. Read them all. But let's get the herd moving. Go to it. Come on, boys. Get get him him get oh, oh. Sheriff, the mask stands absolutely wrong. It's sure. About me stealing. Certainly those papers don't prove anything. They do, then. Eh? Not a thing. Well, I'm not a smart lawyer like you, Forbes. And I'm not a smart thief like you guys. But I am smart enough to lock you both up until I can turn you over to the United States Marshal. And don't talk to me about these papers. They're proof positive. They tell the whole story of an ordinary scheme that might have ended up in a massacre if it hadn't been for the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.